Thank you. How many people have ever hitchhiked in the room? Show of hands. Great. And how many people have ever, you can go ahead, how many people have ever picked up a hitchhiker? Okay. Not as many, but some familiarity with the concept. So what I'm going to talk about tonight is hitchhiking, why people hitchhike, what it's like to hitchhike, and why, sadly, almost no one does it anymore. Now, hitchhiking is the act of basically sticking out your thumb and asking for a ride. And usually that requires standing along a road next to a place where a driver could pull over and pick you up and holding a sign, and usually made of cardboard because that's the handiest material when you're out on the road. And then the sign indicates where you want to go. And uh, people have been doing this type of thing, asking for rides like this for thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> Basically, for as long as there have been modes of transportation and people needing a lift. And as you can see, sometimes a hitchhiker will literally get a lift. <laughs> now, people hitchhike for two basic reasons. And one is economic. They can't afford a car or even bus fare to get where they want to go, like from Bozeman to Seattle or someplace like that. And so hitchhiking in that regards is simply a mode of transportation, a way to travel. But the other reason that people hitchhike is for the adventure. For instance, this is me in 1987 outside Johannesburg, South Africa. I was standing there on the roadside sick with the flu. I had no idea what would happen next. All I knew was where I wanted to go, Zimbabwe, but I had no idea how long it would take or who would pick me up on the way. And that's what makes hitchhiking so adventurous. You're inviting the unknown and relinquishing control. You're saying, okay, fate, I'm in your hands now. Let's jump off this board and see what happens. And you know what? What happens almost always is something interesting. During the 40 plus years I've been hitchhiking, I've been picked up by rabbis, ranchers, college professors, farmers, truckers. I've ridden in BMWs, 18 wheelers, VW Beetles. And once in Wales, I rode in the bed of a pickup with a four goats and a dog. <laughs> And then there was the time I got picked up by a young, newly married couple in Eugene, Oregon. They asked me to drive. <laughs> then climbed into the back seat and proceeded to, as we used to say in the 70s, get it on. <laughs> For half an hour, all I could see in the rearview mirror were their naked legs thrashing in the air. <laughs> okay, I gotta talk about safety now. And, and, and I know, what all of you are thinking, you know, Tom, isn't hitchhiking dangerous? Because look at this article in the Independent Record. But I just made up this article for purposes of this presentation. This is not what it's like, and this never happens. Hitchhiking is actually, actually pretty safe. And uh, studies have shown that it's as, as safe as any other mode of travel, cycling, motorcycle riding, or car travel. In fact, not long ago, people regularly hitchhike, students, um, uh, veteran or uh, uh, military people, even high school girls, but why don't they do it anymore? The one reason I think is that young people just aren't all that interested in seeing America like they used to. A lot of us were inspired by Jack Kerouac's On the Road and Woody Guthrie's As I Walk That Ribbon of Highway. For some reason, striking out on the open road with a backpack and a sign isn't that popular. But I think the main reason is that so few people hitchhike nowadays is that we live in a less trusting and less sympathetic age. And that's due largely to 24-hour TV news that sensationalizes violent crime and misleads people into thinking that the world is dangerous and people are out to get them. Let me give you an example how that fearfulness can play out with near tragic results. About 10 years ago, my nephew Jack came to Helena to visit. We decided to drive up into the mountains to hike so I packed some sandwiches and some bear spray and we set out. After driving about 15 minutes along the highway up Flusher Pass, I saw a young guy hitchhiking along the road, so I pulled over. Jack looked at me in panic. What are you doing, he said. My parents told me never pick up hitchhikers. I said, Jack, it's okay. And I let the guy into the back seat, but Jack was definitely not okay. The hitchhiker and I talked for a bit and it was warm in the car, and in the rearview mirror, I could see that he was trying to get his jacket off. And Jack was staring straight ahead, and the guy was right behind him. And Jack 
could hear this rustling behind him, but he was too scared to turn around. And all he could see through the corner of his eyes are this guy's elbows kind of moving around behind him. And so I looked over at Jack, and I could see that he was reaching down for the, for the bear spray. And so I, t- I t- hissed Jack, no! And fortunately, we didn't go careening off the side of the hill. So I guess in that way, you know, hitchhiking can be dangerous, but generally it, it, it isn't. Now, thankfully, there's a few brave souls out there still willing to thumb a ride, like this young couple from Vermont I picked up last summer. They told me they'd had good luck getting rides from friendly people their entire trip. Those two give me hope for the future, hope for America even. Because, you know, ultimately hitchhiking is about faith. Faith that you won't be stranded in the middle of nowhere. Faith that you'll get to your destination. And most of all, faith in the goodwill of the people who give you a ride, even if at first glance some of them look a little rough around the edges. So I want to ask you this, the next time you see a hitchhiker, and hey, a few of us are still out there, (laughs) think of that guy as a symbol of hope and of optimism. And even if you decide not to pick him up, consider at least giving that poor soul your own thumbs up, just to let him know that, hey, buddy, hang in there. Everything's going to be okay. Thank you.